Okay, so the honor of you 10. What exactly is it? Well, actually, the easiest way to describe would be it's a watered-down Huawei Mate 10 Pro. And don't get me wrong, that's actually totally legit. After all, you would not be able to offer a $800 phone for just $500. At some point, you just have to make compromises. But at around $500, it's also a very good competitor to something like the OnePlus 5T. And since I already got so many requests for that comparison, it will come in a few days. But today, let's check this one out. And as I usually always say about Huawei and Honor phones, the build quality is top notch. It's super sturdy, everywhere executed just fine because it feels very round and smooth in the hands with some smaller bezels. Buttons are placed just about right. Great tactile feedback. It's a metal phone, so at some point a little bit more slippery, sometimes a little bit less. This is no exception. The cameras, they do protrude a little bit. We can't avoid that. We have an RR blaster, also a microphone, a SD card and SIM card tray on the bottom, USB Type-C, the speaker and the headphone jack. What else? We have a notification LED and we have the fingerprint reader on the top or on the front, which is pretty much still best in class. This is just about as good as on the Huawei Mate 10 on the back or on any other great Huawei phone. So super fast, but I already got the update as you can maybe see right now. It has face unlock. So usually if you place it just on your desk, pick it up, it will automatically without having to turn on actually or press any button, as you can see here, actually get triggered. So you don't have to press the button. But if you do it, let's you can see. So just you can see, no face, face. So it works quite good. It's not on a level on a OnePlus 5, but it's better, for example, like something on a Xiaomi Mi Note 3. Other than that, two by one aspect ratio with six inches. And yeah, a little bit of a black border is there, but on the blue version, I think it looks great. Now, I kind of get that they have the fingerprint reader on the front and no buttons besides because this would be very hard to reach, but it's a little bit odd of a position for the fingerprint reader here. I personally don't mind it because I like it. And I actually noticed since I have the OnePlus 5T, I kind of just lean towards using the face unlock because it works very conveniently. Now about the display, as you can see, we have the option for a color mode, but I would just stick with, with it because normal looks a little bit too pale for me. Of course, white balance is there as well. And when it comes to the display, 530 Lux is not the very brightest one. And it's just not the very best screen. So the calibration is nice, but I still have to complain about one thing, which is the screen dimming. Because, for example, right now, it's bright and then it gets dimmer. And you won't really see this so much since I use a very low brightness already for this video, but the dimming is there and it dims by at least 10, 15, 20%, even if screen brightness is already not on adaptive. So as you can see here, automatic is not on, but there is this the same also that we have seen already on Mate 10 Pro, where it just without you having to any chance to turn it off, it will dim. And I personally therefore will take half a star off and the rest isn't amazing. So don't get me wrong, nice calibration, but you just don't have that vibrancy because it most often just dims. Viewing angles are fine and everything else. Also good IPS display because contrary to the Mate 10 Pro, this is not an AMOLED display, but it is a very good one after all. Now about the speaker. This time, also contrary to the Mate 10 Pro, we only get a bottom firing one and not a dual speaker system. And I have to say, it's not a really good one. It's about on the same level as on an Honor 7X, which is not great. It could be louder, it could sound richer because it also doesn't sound high quality. Pretty much the same also for the headphone jack, which is still there, which is nice, but it's an okay one. Not more, not less. So let's get into the performance and kill all the apps. And as you have seen, six gigs of RAM. And it is a very nice performer, but I still have to say, compared to the competition with the Snapdragon 635, this still does not seem quite on the same level. It's not a big difference, and it is better than the Mate 10 Pro when I had it, because the Mate 10 Pro had a lot of some smaller stutters and lag issues, which this one does not have. So, as you can see, browsing, of course, is great. Multitasking is fast as well, so absolutely no problems at all. But there is just something that doesn't make it feel quite as lightweight, quite as fast, quite as snappy. Don't get me wrong, this is still a kind of legit flagship, but it's not quite on the level of the very best ones. And that's why and that's why I will give it five stars, but not five gold stars. Same also goes for the gaming. Really good since it just puts 1080p, so all is fine here. Now about the battery life, full charge takes 
one hour and 50, even though half an hour already takes you to 50%, which is good. And of course it doesn't quite charge as fast as the Huawei Mate 10 Pro, but still this is absolutely fine considering that not quite as a big battery compared to the Mate 10 Pro, but this is fine. Battery life though is something that baffles me because the first days I was usually at around six, maybe six and a half on mobile data, like maybe eight hours on Wi-Fi. But two days ago, I got an update, which also gave me the face unlock option and it said to improve the standby drain, but it also improved the battery life because now I actually was able to get like seven hours, pretty much the same as on the Mate 10 Pro and also roughly like nine hours on Wi-Fi. So by now, even though it should not be able to, it has pretty much the same battery life. Of course, my behavior isn't always exactly the same, but now, even though it has a smaller battery and it has the not quite as efficient IPS display, contrary to the AMOLED, the battery life is top notch. For a flagship, flagship, you won't get such a good battery life on many other phones. So the Marvel Mate 10 Pro and this one already are amongst the very best ones because then battery now, after the update, okay, just judging on two days, it was really, really good. Now, software. Let me just point out one thing. Screen dimming. It's there. I don't like it. And it can't be disabled or something like that. On the Huawei Mate 10 Pro, I heard from a commenter that they see it as a, fi uh, as a bug by now and they will fix it. I kind of doubt that because they say the same thing to me already so many times. So let's just forget that. Now, we have an app drawer or not. That's depending on what you want. We have a theming engine. A very nice one, actually a very flexible one. There are extra apps that allow you to customize even more so because this look I think already is good, but you can improve it definitely way more. Now in terms of options, you have a one hand mode, you have the option to change the buttons. You could also use the fingerprint reader as a multi navigation button, but I don't really like that feature so much and you can change a lot of smaller things, but I don't want to spend too much time on the software. I kind of like what the software does, but there are still a few quirks that I'm just not the biggest fan of, like the screen dimming on some device, also scrolling, which is not really a thing here. It's so minimally tweaked that I'm just going to say it's stock Android. That's good enough for me. Update policy usually from Honor is good. Sometimes they've proven not to be the very best ones, not the fastest ones, but I don't see this to be an issue. And yes, I know I complain a lot about Huawei's or Honor software because there are just some smaller quirks and I can't really even put it in, in words anymore because of smaller annoyances that most people won't even care about. So I'm just gonna say that I'm not the biggest fan of what they do right now at the moment, but I hope it will get better and it's still good enough. No. About the camera software, let's check that one. And it is a very powerful software. I don't think I know any other phone that has so many features because what I would wish for is that the HDR mode that is here, kind of tucked away, would be somewhere directly available here where we have things like, for example, the moment, the moving picture, I mean, and then the portrait mode, the smaller or the portrait mode enabled with the smaller aperture size, the flash, change of thing as you have seen you have so many options and due to ai that we have here now it should actually even improve over time i can't judge that i never use phones for that long but the software is definitely very very capable so let's check the quality now this would be the selfie cam and pretty much as on same as on the honor 7x i noticed that selfies turn out to be a little bit overexposed. That's the only thing because sharpness is good, but not impressive. I've seen better front facing cams, sharper ones, but we have a lot of features like portrait mode on the front facing cam. That's something you don't always get and it works really nice, not always perfect. And sometimes as you can see here, it doesn't get it quite sharp, even though of course it's a fixed focus, but if you have maybe shaky hands or something like that, pictures are fine. It's a really nice one, but there are better ones. Low light actually quite good because it was quite dark and it picked up quite a lot. I think that that has a lot to do with the maybe with the AI because usually you should not get these pictures that bright. Now this is the main camera with the portrait mode and as you can see it did cut off my almost non-existent hair already even more so but sometimes if it gets it right this is a really nice feature. So portrait mode legit. Now low light as you can see here with the flash really nice and even without I have to say low light capabilities in this room for example when I do my default pics absolutely convincing absolutely now of course it cut off here now outside 
not the best weather and I didn't have good weather to make great pictures and to take the full potential out of cameras for the last two months or so already. But as you can see, the portrait mode works very well. Pictures look nice and sharp. But I think still, same as on the, I think it was on the Mavic Mate 10 Pro already, they kind of over sharpen by now. So it's almost like they listen to me because in the past I found them to be a little bit too soft. Now it looks a little bit over sharpened, but I like it that way. HDR as well as you can see here works good even though a little bit weird or inconvenient to reach. This is nice. I gotta say that. So as you can see, portrait mode works nice. HDR once again works very nice. And the picture quality is really good. And fast shutter, all the focus work very well. With the AI, it also learns with time, knows what it actually does, and adjusts the settings. And I think it does it really well. Of course, it needs maybe a little bit more time to properly judge that, but yeah. Now, video. Let's check that. This would be 4K. And about the 4K, I have to say that even though I think they improved actually in terms of video quality, which looks like there is a little bit of some weird banding going on, if you maybe see in the clouds. The autofocus, yeah, in 4K works okay if it does. Because as you can see, sometimes, same as on, I think it was the Mate 10 Pro, it just doesn't want to focus until you maybe shake the cam. Smaller things that could improve over time, but the picture quality has improved. It's just the autofocus that isn't always the very best, which actually leads me to the next thing. 1080p60, I would say, is unusable for the fact, as you will see right now, autofocus just does not work at all. Because as you can see here, I'm trying to focus on my hand, and I tried it several times, it just does not focus. 1080p60, for some reason, just doesn't. Otherwise, you could try it. Even though I have to say, I just don't see a reason to go for... 1080p since it looks noticeably less sharp and the autofocus especially on 1080p 30 as you can see here right now is a little bit more jumpy it's a little bit more nervous so the camera overall also has a little bit of stabilization issues because we don't have anything in terms of optical or kind of an electrical image stabilization so i'm not the biggest fan of that the video is a little bit shaky and the autofocus isn't the best now front facing cam on video looks good not quite so much of overexposing here, a little bit shaky still. The microphone, I have to say, sounds a little bit thin, a little bit tinny. It's okay, but it's not really loud, so also room for improvement, but solid enough, I would say. So let me actually get this done and switch back. And I would already say, let's, get, let's, <laughs> let's go. Let's go to the final conclusion. $500. Is it worth that? Or let's actually say where it stands compared to the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. Let's check. Design, I actually like this one a little bit more in terms of in and feel. For some reason it feels more compact. I don't know if that's really the case than the Mate 10 Pro. So here it wins actually. Fingerprint reader is pretty much the same. The display I give to the Mate 10 Pro even though it has the same screen dimming issue. The AMOLED just was a little bit nicer calibrated if done things right. And this one, still a nice one. It's also not quite super bright. Speaker, definitely quite a solid win with the dual speaker, noticeably louder, richer on the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. So this is where this one loses. Headphone jack is pretty much the same. Performance was better here, but I think the Mate 10 Pro with some updates should be on the same level. After all, they use the same UI, they use the same software in, some, in most aspects and the same SoC. So back then I said it already, I think they need a little bit more optimization, which was maybe done here better. I'm not quite sure, but... As it stands for right now, from what I know, this one is better. Battery life, like I said, I don't quite get it because it should not be as good, but for me it's the same. I would have expected this to be at least half an hour, if not an hour weaker, due to having a smaller battery and the not just a sufficient display. The next thing, software. It's, it's the same. same. Same annoyances with the screen dimming and same pros and so on. Camera. Very, very similar. Not really enough to change much. So for 500, I yeah, I absolutely can recommend it, especially for something like over the Mate 10 Pro. But the Mate 10 Pro, don't get me wrong, is the better phone. The speaker is just better. The performance maybe wasn't, but the battery life should be better, and the and the sound is better, and those things. If that's worth a 300 extra dollars, I don't think so. So if you want. The pretty much best and you like Huawei, go for the Mate 10 Pro. If you are okay with some smaller compromise but save noticeably more money, yeah, then get it, absolutely. And otherwise, what competitors are there? Now, in this price range with a 2x1 display, not actually that many yet. 
OnePlus 5T is the biggest one to point out. There is also something like uh, uh, HTC U11 Plus that I didn't get to review also an LG V30. But most of them are just higher price. So the only one at this price range, at this quality level, is the OnePlus 5T. And that's why I will compare it. But I think these are, at the moment, the two best ones in this regard. Now, I personally definitely have a favorite, which I'm not going to tell you yet right now, because it would spoil the whole comparison. But... Yeah, they did a nice job. Not a great job, but it didn't overwhelm me, especially since the Mate 10 Pro, which is the better phone, already didn't achieve that, which is a little bit of a bummer. So what I would like them to improve, software, kink it out, improve some things, streamline a little bit more, get closer to stock Android, get rid of the annoyances like the screen dimming, maybe, yeah, but otherwise... The rest, camera, no need to improve my battery life is great and actually one of the very few flagships that has such a good battery life. And that's actually already all I have to say. If any further questions, leave them down below. So, yeah, not really sure what else to say. <laughs> okay, until next time. Bye.